Welcome back to part two of deploying a Dockerize.NET Core application with Bitbucket pipelines in AWS. In part two, we are going to focus still on .NET Core 2.0 Docker stage, but we're going to look at creating our Docker file. I'm going to show you some useful commands that you can use to test your Docker file locally before going any further. Let's get started. Okay, so we're going to start off by creating our Docker file inside a Notepad++, but you can use any editor that you like. So first of all, we're going to add a from, and we're going to add the image that we want to use in our Docker file, and that's going to be the ASP .NET Core. This contains the .NET Core SDK, which is really important because we're going to run some .NET Core commands. We're going to set our working directory to app, and next we're going to copy the project from our local computer to the source, to our Docker image. You can think of it like building on the image. Okay, so we're going to say copy demo web API star.csproj and then we're going to say dot forward slash demo web API. So that's going to copy the csproj file from our local computer to our demo web API image. We're going to install all our dependencies by running .NET restore demo web API and that restore is run on the Docker image. Next, we're going to copy all the remaining files to our image. So we're going to say .NET dot forward slash dot forward slash and that's going to copy the rest of the files onto our docker image. Next we want to publish our application. So again our .NET, .NET Core SDK we're going to say .NET publish demo web API dot csproj and release and we're going to output that to forward slash app forward slash out. We're going to expose port 80 because we want our application to run on port 80 now we're going to create our second stage here. So we're going to say from, and this image here does not contain the .NET Core SDK. This is really important because our final image, we want to have as small as possible. So this is why we're using a separate image here. Set our working directory to forward slash app again, and copy, and we're going to copy our files from our builder stage above, where we set, where we created our release, where we outputted our release from forward slash app to forward slash out. And we're also going to set an entry point here. This is the entry point that Docker will use to start our application. And we're going to use set that to our demo web API dot to DLL. Okay, so let's take a step back and look at what we've actually created in our Docker file. On line two, we are adding an image. We're adding the .NET Core image, which this image contains the .NET Core SDK. This is really important because we're going to run .NET Core commands as you can see on line 11 and line 15. So next um, step we're going to on line 5, we're setting the working directory. On line 8, we're then copying the files from our local computer, our csproj file, to the Docker image. You can think of each line that we're doing here as adding upon the image which is on line 2. So we start off with a base image and then on line 8 we add to that base image by copying the csproj files over to that image. We then run the .NET restore demo web API on line 11. This runs the restore on the image that we are creating and then we copy all the rest of the files. We have two separate copy commands here because we want to have cacheability. Basically, if something hasn't changed after the initial run, then Docker will use the cached version and it will speed up your build time. On line 15, we're doing a .NET publish. We're publishing our application. And what's really important to note here is the forward slash app forward slash out on the end of that line there, because we're going to copy our published files to this directory. And when we go to the next stage, the runtime stage, you'll notice that we're going to copy those files out from that directory. We're also exposing port 80. Okay, so heading along to the runtime stage. So this is the second stage of our Docker file. This is all in one Docker file, but I want to split it up into two stages. So next on line 21, you'll see a from Microsoft ASP .NET Core. This is the next image that we're going to actually base our, our image on. Why we're setting a different image here is because this image does not contain the .NET Core SDK. It's really desirable to have the smallest image possible when creating Docker files. So if we don't need the SDK, then we, don't, then we won't add it in our final image here. So then we send our work directory again on line 23. And on tw line 26, we're then going to copy the files that we set on that forward slash app forward slash out builder stage over to our new image. 
And finally, we're going to set the entry point for our um, application. This is so Docker knows what to run our application from. Okay, so let's build and run our Docker image. We're gonna say docker build dash t, t is for tag, demo web API dot. Now we can say docker ps to check that no containers are currently running. Then we wanna say docker run name, we're gonna call the name of the container, uh, demo web API, dash d for detached, we're gonna give it the port 180, 180, and we want to run the image demo web API. Now we can say docker ps again, we can see that our container is running. So let's log into that. We're gonna say docker ext dash it for interactive demo web API and in a bash. Great. If we say ls, we can see all our files are now in the container. Let's just curl to ping our local host dash api dash ping. We're gonna say v for verbose so we can see some output. And now we can see an HTTP OK response. That means that we can now interact with the container and our application of built. That concludes stage one, part two of our tutorial. Next up is stage two, where we look at creating our AWS infrastructure.